Hey, welcome back to another Blender training video. So today I wanna to take a look at um, how we can set up a quick set of nodes that'll allow us to blur textures um, on our objects. And uh, it looks something a little bit like this where we can click and drag and very quickly get a nice looking blur on our textures. And the nice thing is this works for both raster image-based textures as well as procedural uh, vector textures that you, uh, that you use on your objects. So, um, Credit where credit is due. I did not come up with this technique on my own. I was watching this video by Arendale, which was on the uh, ending tile repetition inside of Blender. It's a brilliant video. Um, I'll post a link to this in the description. I highly recommend that you check this out. Um, but as part of this process, um, he did set up a Veroni texture and then blurred it. And I thought to myself, you got to be kidding. I've been wondering how you do that for a very long time. And uh, so I've lifted that section out and I'm basically just now posting this video to show you how to uh, to set up that blur. So let's uh, dive right into this. I'll start a new fresh scene. I'm going to turn on my keyboard shortcuts here so you can see what I'm doing. I'll delete the default cube, shift A to add in a plane, and then we'll go over to the shading tab. We'll hit new to add a new material in, and I have the Node Wrangler um, tools um, uh, set up. If you don't know what Node Wrangler is, go ahead and do a search on YouTube for that. Um, highly advisable that you use that. It'll save a lot of time when working with nodes. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and add in a texture coordinate uh, set of nodes for this. So using the Node Wrangler, I'll hit Control T, and that's going to add this in. And then from here, I can go in and open up uh, the desktop and find that image and let's sort by thumbnails and grab that image right there. Perfect. Okay. Now, uh, it's not hard to set this up and I like node uh, configurations that aren't hard to set up because the more convoluted they are, the less likely it is I'm going to be able to remember all of that, right? So first things first, we've, we've got our mapping node and our texture coordinates. Everything there is fine. I'm going to hold control, right click and drag. That's going to sever the connection because we don't need the vector going into the vector here. All right. Now, uh, what we do need are three other nodes. That's it, three other nodes. So we'll hit Shift A to go to Add, and we're going to start off with Vector Math. Now you would think that that would be under Vector, but it's not. It's under Converter. So Vector Math is under Converter, Vector Math. All right, we'll put that right there. And instead of Add, we're going to set that to Scale. Why Scale? I could not even begin to tell you. All right, the next node that we need is, uh, so we'll hit Shift A, is gonna be a noise texture. So we'll go to texture and we will grab the noise texture. We'll put that right there. And the third node that we need is a mix RGB. So Shift A and we'll go to color and grab the mix RGB node. We'll set that right there. Okay, now vector is going to go into color one and noise texture is going to go into color two. And for the mix mode, this will work if you leave it at mix, but you're gonna get better results if you set this to linear light. And we'll look at this, uh, at why that's the case here in just a little bit. Um, color is now gonna go into vector. And once we do that, we're gonna get this crazy looking bit of distortion, which in and of itself is really interesting. And we could maybe deep dive into what else we could do with that. But uh, this level of distortion is controlled by two things. Number one, it's controlled by the noise and how much distortion is controlled now by our factor. So if we increase the factor, we get more distortion. And if we decrease the factor, we get less distortion. So right off the bat, just this alone has a lot of potential and I could see uh, using this uh, in my workflow. And I will be using that in work my workflow extensively, right? So, uh, but the, the truth of the matter is you don't need a lot to get this to work. So a good starting point number is maybe, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.5. It, it, it really doesn't need to be a whole lot. Now, uh, how do we get that blur? All right, this is entirely coming from the noise texture. And, uh, and so really there are only two of these settings that you need to adjust. So the first is your scale. So right now it's set to five. If we continue to increase that, you can see this thing really begin to um, gain a lot of distortion, a lot of distortion, a lot of distortion, right? If we keep going, it basically begins to diffuse out those edges, all right? And so um, a good starting point for me on this is uh, all the way up at 500, all 
right? And just doing that, you can see that we've already blurred the texture. Now we have um, two other settings in here, detail and roughness. And, and truthfully, detail does a little bit, but not a whole lot. So I usually set detail all the way back down at zero. And just to make my life simple, I set roughness all the way back down to zero as well. And uh, distortion, and that actually does something, right? So the, the more distortion we add, the finer the overall detail uh, becomes and the softer we get that blur. So what I like to do is set the scale to 500 and the distortion up to 50. And then from here, it's really just all about the factor. So as I drop the factor down now, it goes all the way sharp. And is by, if I hold down the shift key so I can just slowly adjust that, you can see we can bring that back and now get a nice soft blur to that. Now, if you if you zoom in and you say, well, that still looks a little bit rough uh, and noisy. Keep in mind, we're, we're viewing this through Eevee. So if I go over to my render settings, you can see the viewport is set right now to a maximum of 16 samples. If I increase that, let's say to 512, this is going to refine itself and get quite a bit uh, smoother, right? Maybe still not as pitch perfect as you would get in something like Photoshop, but for my purposes, probably for yours too, it's gonna be just fine, okay? So in this particular case, that's really all we need to do to set up that blur, super simple. And this works uh, for more than just image-based texture. So if I were to go in and add a uh, texture and let's say a Veroni texture here, and if we were to plug that in to the base, you're gonna see that we get these really hard lines. And while I love the look and, and, and uh, sort of shape of this texture, I oftentimes avoid using it simply because it looks very computer graphics-y, right? So um, now by simply plugging this color into the vector, we can blur those edges. And now all of a sudden this becomes uh, completely usable. So uh, before we wrap up, I said that uh, you wanna make sure that your mix RGB node is set to linear light. I told you that would work if you set it to mix and truly it will, right? So if I set that to mix and increase this, you're gonna see it blur. But what you're also gonna see happen is, let's maybe look at a small shape like here or a small shape like here. As we increase the factor, notice that those actually get pushed out. The texture actually shifts. And so by setting this back to linear light, as we increase that factor, they don't shift, they just diffuse and they blur exactly like we would expect. All right, so that's about it for this video. I hope you found this useful and I hope that it helps your workflow. And until the next time, stay safe and happy blending.